we have a fully charged battery and a little bit of snow it does this thing where it seems to slow down when it hits any amount of snow at all I actually just notice I'm getting a shock here, like a static shock because it's very dry in the cold winter. If you want to open up the snowblower completely like I did, you're going to have to pull off these side covers, you're going to have to pull off this green cover, and uh, you're going to have to take the handlebar off. So take the handlebar off, I've already got one bolt out there, and you'll have to take the wheels off. Uh, you'll have to pop out these clips and if you look closely there's an arrow there that's the side you want to pry on and you should be able to pry this up and out once it's loose like that you can lift it up and out and take it right off start off by tipping your snowblower onto its left side so that the right side is upright and remove the four screws and then this panel will come off. There are eight screws that hold the back green cover on, three along the bottom here, one on either corner on the bottom, and then three across the top, one just above the where you turn the aug the chute, and then one on either side by the lights. So you pull those out and then the back cover will start to lift off but you can't go too far because you need to flip it onto its side so you want to flip it onto this side so you can get access to that because that's where the battery connection is the hardest part about getting this green cover off is the battery mount is here and you have to remove these two screws to pull this plastic piece off and then this uh, battery mount will slide out. Once that's out then the back cover comes off easy. But just getting at these screws you need a short stubby screwdriver. Here's the back cover off of the snowblower and you can see here's the power for the battery. Normally it's up somewhere around here. Uh, it's mounted to the green part of the cover. But you'll see the two wires for the power and then there's also a blue wire that's like a data line that runs to the controller here. And the way this was when it was together, these wires were kind of like this. And you can see there's good insulation on the black wire and on the red wire. And this data wire has a little bit of insulation, but if you look close enough, you'll see that there's no insulation there. Now what happens, or what I believe is happening, because I was getting a static discharge from my snow blowers as the snow is coming up uh, you got to remember it's really cold here so you have you have very low humidity and so you have that dry snow passing past this plastic generating a static discharge and also in the um, in the paddle as it's spinning around and pushing the snow up it's generating static electricity and it was shocking me in the handle and if it's shocking me in the handle that shock could probably jump across there and shock here. And that'll cause the snowblower to shut down. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate that now. So what I'm using is a little piezoelectric from a lighter to generate a spark to the, to the blue wire there. And I'll try to capture the spark on film so you can actually see. And you'll have to listen for the motor. So as you saw, as I produced a spark that went to this data line, it caused either the battery 
or the controller to shut down. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this. It probably causes damage to things inside. But just for demonstration purposes, I was trying to show you. Uh, so my solution to this is basically not have this wire touching here so that static can't jump to this blue wire. So the first step to reduce it is I'm just going to tie all these wires with a zip tie away from away from the frame here and as an additional I might wrap this with a little bit of uh, heat shrink so I'll just pull it pop this apart and heat shrink it but I also made up this ground wire it just has a, a loop on one on two ends and then I'm going to tie this to ground so I'm going to tie this to the black wire. So I'm going to cut this off, solder that on there. And then these ground wires are going to go to, there's a screw right here. So it's going to ground this part of the frame. And the other wire is going to wrap around the side and go to one of these screws. And that's going to provide ground to there and ground to there so that less static should build up here i don't know if this is the best solution but it's the only other solution i could think of generally you don't want to have well static electricity generally static electricity is generated when you have two dissimilar materials rubbing against each other so you have the the super dry snow uh, which is not conductive because it's super dry it's very the humidity is very low brushing against the plastic and that generates a static electricity on the plastic shell. So we need to discharge that. So I'm going to ground, like I said, I'm going to ground this plate. I'm going to ground this plate. I'm not going to ground this because I'm not sure if this is tied to some other value that may not be ground. So if we grounded that, we might actually sh end up shorting something out. So I'm not going to bother short um, grounding that. Uh, hopefully it has some static mitigation in mitigation inside. So that's the only other thing I'm going to do. So I'll just uh, I'll hook that up and I'll show you what I've done. So here's my solution to try and reduce any static electricity built up on the plastic. Anything that gets to this metal is going to be grounded through this wire. It's going to be grounded to this, which will ground this. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I scraped off a bit of the paint there so that it's got good connection to here so it'll ground this. And hopefully that'll ground my handle. Then the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie wrap all these wires together. But I just thought I'd point this out too, that even with this data line disconnected, it still works. So I'm not sure why they have that data line, if it has something to do with telling it that the battery's overheating or the battery's reached a spot where where it needs to shut down or something or reduce power. Not 100% sure, but uh, it looks like it will work without it. So if you've got a aftermarket battery, it may work without uh, any modification because it doesn't actually use that line, it looks like. Okay, I'm just gonna reassemble it and then we'll I'll show you once it's together how you can access some of this. Uh, you might not be able to do all this grounding like this, but how you can access this and at least tie all this up out of the way uh, as a preliminary step, getting this blue wire away from here and these wires away from here so that at least you don't have a static jumping across there. Because these wires, like I said, when I got it, these wires are all against here, just leaning against there. So I'll show you once I got it back together mostly so that you can see how you can maybe take off just one cover and try to reduce some of your problems. We can take a look right here. These are the wires that are against this metal pole and the blue wire is the one that has the data line going to the battery and an arc going from the handle to the blue wire causes the motor to shut down. So I'm going to show you that all you have to do is take off this cover and then you just reach in, pull the wires out of the way and just tie wrap them back away from this pole and against there's a, a the black wire in here like this you could tie wrap it to here or to this black wire here 
and uh, that'll keep it away from here so that you won't have arcing going to any of these wires. So it'll keep any static electricity away from the circuit. I'll tie wrap that and then I'll show you in just a second. So you can see that I can reach in through this right hand side cover and I can tie wrap the wires all together away from the, uh, the metal pole so that there's less chance of static electricity jumping to those wires now. Fully charged battery. So as you can see, this is uh, powdered snow about the same consistency as the last time when I was getting a static shock and uh, the machine's not stopping. So I think it was the discharging of the static through those wires that was causing the machine to shut down in the light snow. So problem fixed. Like and subscribe.